Here it is, Jerkoffs. We are back with another hot app of the Union Jackoff. It is me, Daniel Muggleton. Hello. I'm coming to you live from London town where it's a sunny day, but you step outside and it's fucking freezing. There you go. That's the that's the mean part of London if you live with a good window. Got a real good window in my flat. In the morning, the morning sun comes in, fills you up with hope. You're like, hey, this is probably a lovely sunny day. And then you walk out in there and it's still four degrees. And you're like, oh boy, that is too much. But no, it's good. It's a good old time. It is getting nicer. Uh, I'm about to spend a week on the road doing shows in the north, in the goddamn north, doing my first few shows at The Stand. Uh, If you know anything about UK comedy, The Stand, often considered the best uh, comedy club in the UK. They've got spots in Glasgow, Edinburgh, and Newcastle, so I'm down there next week. Uh, But before... I shoot off and do all that. I've got a brand new episode for you, continuing our Brexit series. This week, the king of the EU, the queen of the EU, if you want to talk about Angela Merkel, we're going Germany. That's right, a German comedian, and I'm chatting to Christian Schulte-Lowe. Christian Schulte-Lowe, I um, actually really wanted to get him on and happened to bump into him last Thursday when I was doing, doing a spot at the old comedy store where he is a regular... I was like, hey, man, I'd love to have you on my podcast. He said, great. And uh, we had a really interesting chat, man. I, I, was, I was psyched to talk to him uh, because he splits his time between Berlin and London. He's, a, he's, a, he's the only one that I know of who genuinely splits their time between the European country of their birth, where he performs in German, and then the UK, where he performs in English. He's as close as you can come to a proper dual national in the comedy world. Uh, So I was excited to talk to him. I've done a couple of shows in Germany, not too much, but a little bit. And I know their scene is long established. And I wanted to talk to him about that, how Brexit was going to affect his life, if at all. Uh, And beyond that, I just, I got a bit of an affinity with Germany. In high school, I studied German uh, for, for no reason. I think anyone who lives in Australia, who studied a European language will admit there's absolutely no reason to do that. Uh, it's an insane thing to do. We are next to Asia. We should study Asian languages. But if you've ever had a crack at Japanese, there's like four alphabets. It seems very tricky. So you stick with German, where some of the words are spelled exactly the same. But of course, they mean something completely different because the study of languages is tricky. But no, so I was excited to chat to him just because, you know... I know a bit of Germany. I know a bit of German. I lived there for a few months when I was a youth. I studied at the university in Berlin that Karl Marx went to. Uh, that blew my mind because back then I was a little little communist boy. Uh, well, not really. I was like a, probably like Pinko by that stage. In high school, I was a communist to rebel, which should give you a rough idea of just how private the school I went to was. When to rebel, you're a communist as opposed to just doing something normal like stealing something or carrying around a knife. But hey, I was, a, I, was into, I was into that and I really enjoyed living in Germany. And I think Germans are a really interesting group of people. Obviously, they get slagged off a lot in the UK. And I was interested to talk to Christian because he, he probably wasn't the first German comedian working in the UK. I think that honor goes to Henning Venn. But Christian is definitely active. And he's also, as I said, the first who genuinely splits his time between the UK and Germany. I wanted to chat to him about that. Um, one thing I think I just, I'll tell you guys one little anecdote uh, before we get into this, which is the worst bomb I've ever had. If you, if you know your comedy terminology, which pretty much everyone does when it comes to bombing, uh, that is when you just have a horrible set and no one laughs. My greatest bomb was at the Edinburgh Comedy Festival which I know gets mentioned a lot on this podcast, but if you do comedy in the UK, it's the, it's the center of the year. It's like the, it's like the weekend, you know, like you structure your week around the weekend. We structure our year around Edinburgh. That's how it works. But yeah, it was my first year over there. I was doing a late show in a very small room at a very rowdy pub. It's called the three sisters. If you don't know it, uh, it smells like vomit and fingering. It's a hell of a place. Uh, and I was doing my show in like a little room there. It's like a 20 seat room. But the thing is in Edinburgh, there's no such thing as fire because it rains so much. So you can just overfill the room. 
you can just like you can, you can be like 20 people sit like it's supposed to be for 20 people but you can fit like 35 people in and then like when they donate you get more money right so it's like a saturday night and like, i crammed it i had like 35 40 people in this 20 seat room people were like sitting on top of each other people were sitting on the ground people were standing in the doorway like there has never been a fuller room than this room and i started my set and after like seven minutes i realized that no one was laughing at anything and then i knew what the rest of the show was like and i was like oh wow if they haven't laughed at this stuff there's no way that they are laughing at any of the other like filthy shit that i'm about to say and so i just kept plowing through trying to stay strong but i couldn't people just kept leaving it's a free show so they just like file out and i reckon i lost probably like 15 of the 40 people. So now we're still, still at a full room. They're like dudes from like a stag do who are dressed up, sitting on the stage, like just not laughing the whole time. Like I've ruined their night as well. So brutal. And uh, yeah, basically when it was real, I was just like, at some point I was like, look guys, if you want to leave, I just understand. All right, this is a bad show. We're having a bad time. I won't take it personally. And then this, this girl who was sitting on the ground put up a hand and I was like, yes. And she said, I'm German. And I was like, okay, that's terrific news for you. And she said, yes, I think they would like it if you made fun of that. And I was like, what are you talking about? I lived in Germany for a bit. Why would I make fun of you for being German? And she was like, sorry, I was just trying to help. And I was like, ah, there you go. That bloody classic German sense of humor we've all heard so much about. And then the whole room laughed. <laughs> the whole room laughed for the first time in 35 minutes and i thought it was an appropriate story to tell given we have our german guest today christian schulte uh about to get into the episode but just want to say thank you to anyone who came down to acdc last sunday another great show uh, at backyard we are back there again april 7th uh, i want to give a quick shout out to the aussies in london facebook group if you are an Australian in London, uh, these guys organize social events. They got some drinks coming up. They got a trivia night. They always suggest people come down to the comedy. Uh, and I'm really appreciative of their support. So Aussies in London. Or if you know anyone who's an Australian in London who's a bit homesick, that is the place to find your fellow countrymen. Uh, and as always, if you do like the podcast, please do give us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to it. Every little bit helps. We got our second review this week on iTunes and I really appreciate it. So if you guys would go and do the same, please give it those five stars. It matters. We're expanding. We're on Twitter. I've got some great guests coming up and I want this thing to keep growing. Now, that's enough of me. Uh, this is a great chat with Christian Schulte Lowe, the German comedian, at German comedian on Twitter. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Herr Schulte Lowe. They can't see us, can they? No, absolutely okay. not. One day, one day I'm hopeful to get a visual element. I think there's something to that, you know? You hear a voice and you kind of want to see someone's head. Yeah, but that's, that's again, that can be a massive disappointment. Sometimes when you talk to somebody on the phone and you're like, oh, that person sounds really nice and attractive. <laughs> yeah. And then you see the person and you're like, oh, I wish we had just stayed phone friends. Just voice friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much more pleasant. Do you have that with uh, celebrities and stuff as yeah. well? Musicians, I think, because like... I'm not, I'm not a big music video guy. So like, I remember the Libertines as right. a band. I was yeah. so let down yeah. by their appearance. I loved the songs and yeah. I was like, I saw a video and I was very excited to see this band. I was just kind of like, ah. Oh. They're always shorter too, aren't they? Like very short and like not, the aura is just like not there sometimes. And you're like, no, I wish yeah. I had. That's why they say don't meet your heroes. You know? Don't meet your heroes. Mm. Just don't even look at your heroes. Yeah. Like meeting them, I mean, they might be okay. But right. looking at them, you're always like, ah, oh, you're a little, little person who's real narrow. Yeah. Just listen to them. Yeah. It's like, have you dealt with many like celebrity actress people whenever you meet them? A few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few. And like, it's always, I think it's always been a disappointment. Because they look small. They look small. They're very narrow and they've got a big fucking head. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Sometimes though, like I've, I've met a few people where I was blown away. Where I was like, wow, 
right. that person. There's something about that person that makes me kind of like like an energy, an energy, and like an aura and a um, right. Yeah, something. There's the, the, the X factor, right? So okay. you see the person. You're like maybe it's because you've seen the person so many times on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that kind of like is the result of that, you know. Or it's really something magical, and that's why the person became famous in the first place. Yeah. Or the other way around. You never know. Like, but, did they learn that because they're famous? But no, I think I think some people just have it, you know? Some people have it, yeah. They're just like, you just kind of talk to them. I mean, obviously, neither of us have it, but... Well, you know, nobody would know because, you know, they can't see us, can they? That's No, but, oh, just sometimes you just listen to people, and I'm like, oh, man, you must be fucking cool. Yeah. Just like even this guy on a bus, you just hear it, you see a guy on a bus and you're like, oh, you're crashing it. Yeah, you're right. Like, there's no way that you're not super popular in your circle. Right. But they might be like a piece of shit though. You know, like they I might know, be super popular and charismatic, energetic, but they might just be a bad person. Because they can hide behind their really cool appearance. Exactly. So they don't have to be a good person. Exactly. It's very then, rare to find somebody who is a good person and is cool as hell. Yeah, I don't. That I, isn't very cool, is it? Like, yeah, okay, that was a bad first, analogy. First joke of the show. I oh, like really? it. There we go. Okay. Thanks was, for laughing. Thanks I, for making the effort. I will. I always will. I, I bring energy to this that I do not bring to any other aspect of my life. <laughs> this is, this is, <laughs> That'd be a good title for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the title of this podcast? This podcast is the Union Jack Off. Mm. Oh, that's the, you agree. You agree with very minimal information. I think out of no anybody. information, no. I, I didn't even know where to go. Yeah, I had to ask you this morning where exactly. Yeah, you, are you based? You just took it. You're just like I just at that the store. I'm like, hey, do you want to do this? And you're like, yeah, maybe we could talk about it during the break. And I'm like, yeah, it's actually smart. And we that's never a, did. That's a, no. And then after the show, I was like, hey, do you still want to do it? And an email. An email yeah. is very formal. So we we've gone informal and formal in it's, our interactions. Yeah, it's been a very strange kind of like. Yeah, path so far because we've treated the email like it's a text, right? But it was email, and then do you think you have to treat it differently? Email and text, yeah, absolutely. If really, you, if you don't add your name to an email, I think that's quite rude. I add my name to a text. You I'm add your name to a text, yeah, just like blah blah dot Christian. Yeah, what? I would most like, of the time re- regards that. Christian at the end of a text, being like, "Hey man, are you up?" Regards well, this is Britain. <laughs> if this is Britain, you say cheers, don't you? You say cheers. Cheers. Oh, so you go with cheers? Yeah, I go with cheers. Or oh. I, I put a couple of X's, you know, just a one X. Just one a, X? That's pretty common here. Yeah. I think great. Britain it's, is the capital of the X after it is, a text. Yeah. Just a single X, and especially boy to boy. Right. I think there's more of that here than, especially in Australia. I don't know what Germans are up to. No, we don't do that because it's it doesn't look like a kiss. We're more, you know, precise than that. Okay. So <laughs> we don't want to... It just the X just doesn't look enough like a kiss to use it as a symbol for a kiss. I think right. So the Germans invented the emoji because you guys are like I want we want an something accurate more accurate visual representation right for this kiss. I think we're still not happy with it because it's not it's not a photo. <laughs> it's not you a know? photo. <laughs> just a photo of pursed lips. That's what Germans are sending. That'd be great. Yeah, I would. I would like that. I like. I like an eccentricity in a European country. I right. do. Right. You know what I mean? Like I don't want. I don't want you to all. Be normal like us. No, don't that's worry. Right. I'm not. normal. I, you, I you, consider you, you, you consider Australia normal. Yeah, that's that's. You can't not. That's what you're used to. Right. You know what I mean? Like you can't be like, oh, we're so weird. If you say that, you're dishonest, or you don't fit in. I think. Right. Or you are weird. Yeah. If you say we're weird, but like, but like, I think when you say we're weird, you're saying that the rest of the population is weird. And like your inclusion in that can be yes or no. Right. Also, usually people who say, ah, oh, I'm so weird. Yeah. They're really boring. Yeah. They're never... They, they're boring. And once they're not boring, they're like, oh, we're so weird. We're so different. <laughs> you're like, nah, you're just not. And somebody who would say, well, well what do you mean? They're often weird. Yeah. they don't see it. Yeah. They're like, what do you mean you're weird? Yeah. I'm like, and then they're just like wearing an apron. Yeah. And they only pay in cash regardless of the situation. Right, right, they right. They don't have a bank card. And they're like, what do you mean? That's normal. Yeah. Cash is everywhere. Yeah. Are you cash or card? You're a cash I'm or a card? cash guy. A cash guy? I'm a cash guy. Do you reckon, do you reckon that's... Wait, where, are you, where are you from in Germany? By Where'd the way, I keep, I'm glad you asked the cash question because it is a big thing in my life. I keep wondering because I always ask people that work in coffee shops, you know? Yeah. How, what's the percentage of people paying cash nowadays and what's the percentage of card payments? You ask the percentage? I'm really interested in that. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I want to know if, if cash would still be around in like 10 years' time. And this in, in Britain especially, nobody pays cash. So it's like they say one in six or one in seven people would pay cash. Yeah. They, and I'm they, that guy. They put it in the machine before you get yep. the cash out. Like right. that's the thing. It's like the right. coffee's this much, they start punching it in the machine. You're like, oh no, is cash yeah. okay? Yeah. And they, but that's when I pay cash, when I see them... Okay. Punch it into the machine. 
And if they don't have a machine, I ask for a card payment just to annoy <laughs> them. <laughs> You're just basically ruining the hospitality industry. Exactly. That's yeah. your thing. You're taking your day out on these these goddamn high and mighty overpaid, baristas. yeah, <laughs> overpaid coffee shop stuff. What, what a horrible overpaid industry! As we sip the coffees that we just bought, exactly from a barista that I paid in cash. Yeah, there you go. Paid in cash, mm. feeling good. Did you pay in cash? Yeah, you I did. did. Yeah, mm. well, that's uh, it's very hard for me to get rid of because you know in in comedy, I mean, obviously we declare every every penny we earn, but. Um, we get paid a lot of cash and yeah. it's very hard for me to get rid of it because my I don't have a proper bank. So like to deposit cash into my bank is very difficult. Are you sure you want to be telling all these things online now in this podcast? I mean, yeah, I think at okay. this point they must, they must have a rough idea of where I'm at financially. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah but I, yeah, you're right. But it's, it's becoming less and less kind of like popular to get cash after a gig. It used to be like most of the gigs in Britain paid cash. And now, and now it's like it depends on the level you're at, obviously on the circuit. Mm. But if you do the the bigger gigs, then most of them wouldn't pay cash anymore. Yeah, well, it's because they surely, you know, the the tax office was kind of like, hey, I'm what's sure it's, going it's, on it's, here. It's that, but it's also that too many comics became gambling addicts and alcoholics and drug addicts because they had so much cash in their pocket. Right. That the promoters then decided we we do have a bit of a responsibility <laughs> here. Let's keep these kids off the streets, you know. Well, that is saying it very positively. If that is yeah. the reason the clubs have switched to that, that's very nice. You know what? They don't give a shit about us. It's no, just the tax, not. isn't it? Yeah. 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 But I mean, I, I did this gig in the, in the Netherlands and they insisted on getting a copy of my passport for payment. And I'm not really sure if my visa allows me to work in the Netherlands. Right. <laughs> so I've just kind of left that go. Like, I'm just kind of, I guess I worked for free that night. I don't know. I got to follow it up at some point. Because I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Right. Did they not pay you then? Well, no, because they were like, you need to send a copy of your passport and we'll transfer you. Okay. And I was just like, uh-huh. And I'm just like, wait, am I committing some kind of visa fraud if I get paid? You, you probably have done that, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've been... Yeah, I don't know if I've ever been paid overseas in Europe. Because I know a few things in Europe, but mostly it was cash. So, okay. like, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know the position. I, I don't know. I'm kind of a dummy like that, I think. Well, yeah, but... Well, next time, just say that you came into the country without a passport and see what they say. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the right thing. Yeah, just, just get think. picked up and put in a camp. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. shit. Do I get paid in the camp? You get vouchers, I think. Okay. Mm. The vouchers. Yeah. So, wait. So, you're, you're, you're a German man. We should, we should clarify. Christian Schultz, hello. Yes. German man. Correct. From the, from the continent. No. The continent of Europe. Why not? Yeah, yeah. That's what they say in Britain, right? Yeah, from the, the continent, continent of yeah. Europe. Well, oh, they would even just say Europe. Um, Christian is from Europe, they would say. That's true. And this is not considered Europe, as we all know. Not anymore. It is, no. no well, it never has been. It's <laughs> well, always it was, been Britain. But I, because like, continental Europe, I think continental Europe because the continental breakfast. Like, you think the continental breakfast was there before the continent? That is a very interesting... Uh, well, that's how I delineate, you know? I'm kind of like, you right. know, in Britain, they got a hot breakfast. Continental breakfast means cereal and cold meats. <laughs> that's, right, right, right. That's how my, my head works. <laughs> it might be that. It might be that Europe has just formed around a breakfast table. I hope so. And, yeah, and Britain, the same thing. But yeah. just Britain's like, what if we what if we cook this meat? And Europe's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, she's like, that's not a thing. This we is do that. This yeah. is not on. This is not dinner, guys. This, this is not a fry up. Come right, on. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. But no, so which part of Germany are you from? I would love to know. I'm from the part where you definitely don't cook anything for breakfast, uh, the very west, close to the Dutch border, where people like to take photocopies of passports. Yeah, there you yeah. go. The the litigious Dutch, the sneaky Dutch, the sneaky Dutch. Um, our 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 neighbors and friends. Yeah, the Dutch. Okay, so West West Germany. What Holland what? is to us? What New Zealand is to you guys in Australia? Really, that's the a German beloved neighbor. Yeah, is it is it beloved? Like a bit of rivalry, bit yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's uh, um, yeah. But, in football, it's our biggest rival. Well, England claims to be Germany's biggest rival. Right. But no, no, no. It's actually the Dutch. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they obviously they historically they've been. You know, a lot better than the English. A bit better, <laughs> and uh, just a yeah. bit more thrilling. I would yeah, say. Yeah, sure. Because like that. Yeah, England does do that though. They're like, no, Germany is a big rival in football. Yeah, and only you... that Germany doesn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But um, no, mutually, I think it's Germany and Holland, and then. But ov obviously, when Germany plays, play, plays Britain, it's a big thing too. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's. That, I guess is that is that kind of like the old hostilities? Is that kind of like you guys? Well, you're now the two biggest European countries like kind of excluding russia i don't know russia's kind of you know russia's its own thing 
Yeah. Just like in terms of just in, even outside football, like economically and stuff. Is it Britain and Germany? Or is yeah, it Britain, it's Britain and Germany France? and France. They're like, yeah. Germany is the biggest one. Yes. Uh, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Very successful nation. Massive. Absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, it is. Like there's, <laughs> there's no arguing that. Like English people will disagree with you. Like, what do you mean Germany's winning? And it's like, no, they, they are. It's like the football. They're winning. Yeah, well, not anymore, but like, yeah. Like, England is on their way up. I mean, like, in terms of football, not really economically, obviously. Sure. But, um, Stagnating. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's, if so, yeah. Um, yeah, but like, it's, um, well, it's, it's fun because like, there is a rivalry, obviously, between mm. Britain and Germany. Well, there's a rivalry between Britain and Australia, isn't there? Yeah. In, a, in many in, ways. In a weird way. But I don't, I don't really understand that rivalry because we're not anywhere near each other. Do you feel welcome in Britain? Yes. Okay. Yes. Like it, at gigs, maybe sometimes you say you're Australian and people are like, eh, like they'll, they'll say like, you know, something about the ball tampering in the cricket or like, right. you know, convict, like very rarely, like, but every now and again, but like, yeah, generally, I, I don't think they even really see me as foreign because it's the empire. Yeah. You know, like they don't, they're not even, they don't, they don't take time to explain anything. It's a bit like the whole Brexit thing when they're like, yeah, I mean, you're German, you shouldn't worry you can stay i mean you're not we we're not you know we don't mean you <laughs> we don't mean germans or french or yeah you know who we mean it's like, yeah no you mean you know you, do you don't know us. who you mean you don't know what you mean <laughs> but um it's, yeah. it's similar isn't it like so australia would be like ireland and, and canada yeah it's just like we're kind of part of the the bigger you know what i mean the yeah. bigger thing that's it's really funny because like this is with, with this with this podcast like uh, the last few weeks and I'm gonna keep it going. I've had guests from Europe on like comedians from Europe. Like, I've had like the Dutch, your big rivals, and then like a Greek person. Right. And then like it was funny because like the the Dutch lady as well, Mickey Overman, was saying yeah they're like we don't mean you yeah like for immig- like immigrants yeah and it's like but you do yeah in fact we're exactly what you mean yeah <laughs> the people you think you mean are allowed to stay exactly. <laughs> 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 it's just like but I as i said like on on stage also when when we did the gig that they won't kick out the germans because you know the royal family they're german too they can't really get rid of them of course and so i do feel i i, I do know what they mean when they say we, yeah, we don't mean you guys you know yeah but is that but as a german guy this is, this is a funny thing like, as a german comedian surely they're just like they're very excited because they're like wait there's a german comedian Ha ha ha! Yeah, that's the what a cheapest what a, joke. Yeah. What, a, what a paradox! Right. And then yeah, like they 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 want you to be on stage. They're like, we want to see this. this yeah, is, this is like a, you know a bearded lady. Yeah, this right. Is... A unicorn. Yeah, an oxymoron. Yeah, there we go. And um, I'm surprised how many people who don't seem very educated when they yell at you after a show do know the word oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it is it is a bit like that, yeah. But I, I mean, for some reason, people still think that Germans don't have a sense of humor, and I think, you know, that's not really funny. Yeah, they don't it have, is funny though. It is, <laughs> yeah, because they're right. I mean, like Germans are, like, you know, Germans are funny, but they often don't mean it. They don't want to be funny, and it's just right. You know, it's an unintentional it's humor, an unintentional kind of like joke they're making. But then, but then you've you've come along now, an intended humor for many years. Right. As a German person. Yeah, it's been 10 years in Britain now. This, 10 this years? 2009, yeah. Is when you came across. Yeah. That's interesting. Why, why did you... Had you already been doing comedy in Germany? Well, no, I started... I did um, um, a semester abroad. So I studied in... in I studied abroad. So in, yeah. in, in the east of Germany, which is a... Well, okay. yeah, well, it's, there, it's, there we go. Oh, obviously. Little, right. little, little joke? Right. No, not a joke. It's oh. just like... Well, if there are any German listeners, they probably find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I studied. I studied in Eastern Germany because I've, it was it was only a few years after the war had come down, and I found it very fascinating to sure. to kind of like because I'm from the very west, mm-hmm. so I wanted to experience what it's like to uh, to live there. So I went there to study, which was great, and then did one semester abroad in Belgium as part of the Erasmus program, which is like a European student exchange program. I, I did a semester abroad in Germany. Did you like as? It wasn't Erasmus. Everyone called it Erasmus. But I think for Australians, we don't get to call it Erasmus. Well, you're part of the Eurovision Song Contest now. So I guess you can also be part of Erasmus. But that was a recent thing. We right. fought very hard to be... Like, why the fuck are we the Eurovision I think it's great, though. Britain is leaving the EU and Australia is suddenly in it. It's great. <laughs> it's just like... Very you know, sneaky and clever. There's enough flights now. It's like, yeah, I mean, we're all kind of close, aren't we? It's great, yeah. yeah it's, I find... I've never got... I've never watched Eurovision once. I've never... 
that's the one kind of well you only have to watch it once it's the same every year really yeah okay so you watch it once and you have seen it forever was britain in it yeah yeah, yeah. they're always in it yeah and ireland's in it yeah. i remember because ireland yeah. wins They've it a, bit, it a few don't times they? yeah, yeah. Britain has, I don't know, Britain has probably won it once or so. Germany has won it. I mean, that's classic Britain. Twice. Win something once. And that's yeah, right. It. And then just... <laughs> and talk about it for yeah, fucking exactly. ages. And rub it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then never, you know, get there again. So, no, but I did one semester in Belgium and then I um, did a gig there. So I went to a comedy show and I right. um, talked to the promoter afterwards. I said, can I... Because I had already written stuff, but I never performed. And then they put me on and they said, yeah, come back in two weeks. Have you ever done it? And I said, yeah, done it many times you know? <laughs> just lied i lied i lied my way on stage you a know big liar and then i did my first gig and i had prepared for like two weeks or so the usual you know when you do it for the first time you just keep going through your material like every day and rehearse it terrible so it was way it wasn't natural anymore wait do you think that's normal is that what everybody In the beginning i think it's normal the first time isn't it i mean no no, no. i think this i think you're taking like a like a, a german level of preparation maybe i was over prepared yeah. yeah you were like you were mm. Because a lot of people I know, because I used to run like an open mic, so I see a lot of people's first times. And like a lot of the first times, especially in Australia, were just people going up with like one joke. Oh, really? And then they thought, because like, you know, see comedians like swaggering around the stage talking about their life. Right. It's like, I'm just going to do that. Right. Do my one joke. And then just nobody laughs because it's just not enough. It's shit. Yeah. It's it's not that easy. Yeah. But I, I was the opposite. You know, I had like written probably... I guess I got seven minutes and I had written like 12 and I tried to fit a lot of stuff in. Sure. And people didn't really laugh about the stuff that I thought would be the funny bit. Yeah. They laughed about other stuff. Like when I said I'm a German comedian, which was just, an, that was just like a gateway into a, a joke. Yeah. But they laughed at that harder than at the actual joke. And I'm like, oh, hang on. No. <laughs> okay, that's the approach then. This is good. And then I, um, well, I did improvise a little and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff worked better than the, uh, the, the jokes that I had written. Well, really? The, the jokes that I thought were jokes. Um, and, um, you were just improvising in your first gig? Just having improvising, a chat but I was kind of like trying to, I was picking up on what they, what they were enjoying, you know. Okay. Anyway, so then that wor- kind of worked okay. And they asked me to come back. And then um, I got some money for my second gig, which was crazy. What? You got paid on your second gig? Yeah, like 20 euros or so, which was great, though. As that's, a student. That's insane. I've yeah. never heard of anyone getting paid for their second I know. <laughs> and then we even toured a little bit through Belgium, you know. They were like, we have this German guy. And it did feel like the bearded lady. So we, <laughs> we found this crazy guy who's traveling with us like a freak. We've got, we got this big German man. Yeah. And he's going to go up there and be like, I'm a German comedian. And everyone's like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Oh, very funny. And that's then five minutes sorted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, no, and then I kind of developed the act, you know. And then I... Um, I started to understand how it works. And yeah. then I, uh, a few years after that, and then I did gigs all over Europe. I always went back to Belgium and did Holland and, uh, you know, just, but right. just in English, even though I had moved back to Germany after that semester. And then I did work in several European countries because they're all kind of connected, aren't they? You have a promoter in Belgium who also knows the promoter in Scandinavia. Yeah. That who is, then recommends you. That is so different to hear. Like here, it's like promoters in London don't right. know the other promoter right. in, in London. In Britain, it's the exact opposite. You can be a superstar somewhere yeah. and then anywhere else, people would say like, yeah, we don't know you. Just come yeah. and do half an hour for no money. Yeah. You know? it's just like, look, we know you're huge in Manchester, but yeah. this is Birmingham. This means nothing. Yeah. Manchester means nothing. They will hate you here. Yeah. No, okay. So you just, you just started, you lied your way I into comedy way into it. and then did okay. Then yeah. got brought back to be paid, and then taken on tour. Yeah, and, and then, then, but then years later, I wait, wait. Sorry, what year is this? I need to know what 2002. year. Two thousand and two. Two thousand and two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so that, this is like that very start of kind of the European comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circuit. That, yes, that was like there was not much going on then. You were a goddamn pioneer. I was just there. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was there. I was, I was just there and told some jokes. And just pure modesty. Yeah, I was just around. <laughs> No, but it was fun to see how it, how it then developed, you know. And then right. I went to, years later, I, I, then I quit my day job. So I'd started work to work in television after, after university, like as, as a game show producer. Crazy stuff. As a game show producer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're going to, sorry, we're going we're gonna to go back to here for a little bit. We can't, we can't just keep going down the stand-up thing. Okay, great, great. You're a game show producer in Germany? Mm. First in Germany, then um, I was headhunted by a company from Eastern Europe, from Hungary, Get out of here. Yeah, and then I worked for them at like a multinational company who worked for like, they produced shows for like 65, 70 countries. Right. Worked for them. And then when I left them, I got headhunted by a South American company and I moved to Argentina. 
And on the side, I always did stand up. And you were just, you were a big shot game show TV producer in the day. Yeah, like I was, but I, like it in was a full time countries. Job. Yeah. But like, oh, wow. Because that was a small scene as well, you know? It probably still is, but it, it, it was a small scene. What, and what, what language are the game shows in? Several languages, but the production was in English. The production sure. language was English and Spanish when I went to South America. So Right, you just spoke Spanish, obviously. Yeah, I, I, I like learned Spanish European, before. Just, yeah, yeah just, oh, of course I know the language that I need for that job already. Well, it's, it, it, it sounds crazier than it is. It's, just, <laughs> you know, it's not 25 languages, but yeah. How many, how many languages do you speak? Well, proper, I would say that I speak properly is three languages, just like German, yeah. English, and Spanish. But like, you could probably get by on a bit of French if necessary. Yeah, when I learned Dutch because I was and in Belgium. Dutch, there we go. Yeah, this is... Uh. And yeah, but it's very similar to German, so it doesn't really... But I couldn't gig in... I could gig in Dutch, but I have to be really drunk. <laughs> just to get it moving? <laughs> yeah, just well, like that... be drunk, speak German, and then it sounds Dutch. Really? Is that the quite same? Si quite similar. Ah, okay. I like that. I thought it was the... I've heard this, the optimum point to speak a foreign language... Three beers. It's true. I've heard because it. Because you stop thinking. Exactly. Yeah. And you communicate even though it's not grammatically perfect. It's when you do a gig, right? Do you yeah. believe that a beer helps you be funny on stage? Absolutely. Right. But three beers probably won't or five won't. Oh, man. I'm actually pretty funny when I'm drunk. I think so. It slows me down. I it guess. does, right? I and just, you don't filter. You just say it. Yeah. And I just kind of... I, I get a good swagger when I've had a few drinks. Because that's, you know, that was, um, yeah, with the store on Thursday, I was... Uh, How many did you have? I saw I, you with a beer before you went on. I had a, I had a couple of pints. Great. Um, you, no, you seemed very relaxed on stage. No, I was, that was me nervous, man. Usually, was I'm, it really? Um, yeah, usually I'm much more... When, when, I'm, when I'm comfortable, I'm like slow and I kind of walk around a lot and I laugh at things that I say. Right. You know, whereas that gig, I wasn't laughing at anything I said. I was like, no. Well, just, you were focused. This is, all, this is all fucking... Yeah, I was you like... standing in front of the beast. That's it. I was eye of the tiger, you know? I'm like, yeah. this is the big game. Yeah. And that's the wrong energy. No, I mean, it's also the right energy because... But you're right. Look, I remember when I came to the store first, again, like 10 years ago, um, I, uh, I saw some comics who are like phenomenal comics and they, um, they were so good and they were so relaxed. They were just eating half a chicken backstage and then yeah. the compare the MC on stage said their name and then they just dropped the chicken and walked on with their fingers still full of grease from the chicken <sighs> and just washed it down with a beer on stage and were hilarious on stage. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm here backstage just like you sweating. know yeah sweating pacing. not able to talk pacing up and down like a leopard yeah and it was just and they were just the most natural people in the world you know oh dude that's when you that's when you know you're feeling good when you're like polishing off a meal yeah like there's this um I, this is like one of my favorite it's um david tell he's an american comic mm -hmm. you're a fan he's got this special called road work and basically like it's him doing shows at a bunch of different clubs right and the first club is like they're like, you know, doing the introduction from the stage. They're like, Dave Attell, ladies and gentlemen. And like, you just see him kind of like smoking out the front. He's like, oh shit. And yeah. like, just kind of runs and like gets into like the lift and he's like sipping a Coke. And then yeah. like the lift won't work. And they're just saying, Dave Attell. And like everyone's still clapping. Like, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Dave Attell. And he just like, just saunters onto stage. Like right. nothing happened. And I'm like, that's brilliant. That's great. I'm still like, you know, I'm measuring my distance to the stage. I don't want to give him a chance to stop clapping. Right. Before I hit it. What I do now, maybe it is, um, I don't know if it's good, but I think it's good. Like when I walk on stage and I'm not the compare, I'm not the MC, but mm. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a set. Then I always talk to the, to the, to the MC as we shake hands, you know, just like one line or so, you know? Oh yeah. And I think what well, it relaxes, I think me and it relaxes everybody who watches because people see it and they see that we're kind of like, we're not. Yeah. nervous you know i walk on in a casual fashion you know yeah like these guys are buddies you know, yeah they like, know yeah, each man. other they like each other they're relaxed they don't you know they talk to each other yeah it's probably just whispering like man after i crush this set we should get a beer yeah so, yeah I'll but what we that. actually do say is look at these idiots <laughs> <laughs> no but it's, it's actually i think it helps you know to just be like you said to be in the right mindset you know yeah and, oh no you can i don't know i can always tell like when a comic is like super relaxed on stage you mm. know like when they're actually relaxed you can always see through it yeah when they're kind of like pretending you see the fear yeah yeah, yeah. you're just yeah. like no 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 you're you're fucking you're you're counting beats on your little fun pauses right you know like none, <laughs> yeah, none yeah, of those yeah. laughs are authentic yeah they're just designed for yeah. the set but no just uh it's i'm glad i came across relaxed mm. um yeah you did definitely yeah well, that's good but yeah no and it's... you look like you belong on that stage and i think that's always important isn't it like yeah you, you, if you some people just seem to not belong not to, to belong not on that stage and you did belong oh, that's that nice yeah well look if you're looking to see me again at the comedy store expect to wait 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's um, it is. Sorry, I gotta I gotta get back to this game show thing because okay. I used to I used to be a trivia host. Oh, great. in Australia, great. So obviously the 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 pinnacle of that career, which I have now abandoned, would have been hosting. You've put it on hold. I've I put say. it on hold. Yeah, you never you know. know. And that could come back, deal yeah. or no deal. Could be me. <laughs> One day, Wheel of Fortune. Could be me. I need to know. Is what... that still on Australian television? Wheel of Fortune. I'm pretty sure. Wow. We don't. We don't move quickly. <laughs> well, <laughs> that not... sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our thing to drop concepts quickly. You Great, know? I love that. It's just yeah. It's on American TV, but the thing is, everything's on American TV. Yeah, because they have like six million kind of like stations. Have you noticed that? Just like no shows ever finished. Yeah, they just be they be moved to another exactly. smaller, normally smaller station, and then uh, yeah, the host gets smaller one. older and older, and Much the older. set the studio gets, gets smaller. smaller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the prices go down. The uh, prices go down as well. Eventually, it's just a puppet in a box yeah. hosting it, and it's like fake money. And you're like, yeah, it's yeah. a kid show now. Yeah, Great, yeah. beautiful. Keep it on the air. Yeah, you can win the car. Well, it's a matchbox car, but you can still <laughs> win the car. <laughs> That's American TV model. <laughs> right. But wait, I got to, so you, you produced it. How long were we in the uh, game show producing game? Quite a few years. Like I did um, uh, like maybe eight, nine years or so. Wow. Okay. So, okay. So I've got to ask, best show you worked on? Or was the, what was the best game show? I actually did produce a few episodes of uh, The Wheel of Fortune in Germany. Nice. What's, yeah. what's the German title for Wheel of Fortune? Uh, Glücksrad. Glücksrad. Glücksrad, yeah. Which so it's like luck wheel. The, yeah, yeah. There we the, go. The luck wheel. Oh, man. That's great. Um, luck wheel. I love I love like some German translation like they speak like a tiny bit right oh great like yeah. like not you know not enough that every German is like oh yeah German is so good but it's only the explanation of why I speak a bit of German and then that's it that's the end of the sentence what is know? the explanation oh, it's just like, wie lautet die Begründung oh no not Jesus this is like I haven't had a few beers I've had a coffee now I'm very <laughs> self conscious do you want me to spike your drink with like uh, something a bit please stronger? give me okay. some Bailey's let's do it. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get like 65-year-old woman drunk, Bailey's and coffee. Bring oh, it on. Great. That's my target group too. <laughs> <laughs> That's your demo. Same with Wheel of Fortune. I yeah, really exactly. Yeah. It's all coming back around. Um, but no, it's just like, yeah, ich, uh, what? ich habe sechs Jahre Deutsch in Hochschule gelernt. Sehr gut. Ja. Und dann uh, zwei Semester in der Universität. Mm -hmm. Und dann uh, sechs Monate in Berlin gewohnt. You know why that was very, very good German? Not only because you pronounced it well and you didn't make any grammatical errors. Oh, there was a few grammatical was, errors. I no, fucking heard them. I'll tell you why it was perfect German. Yeah. Because you had quite a few very precise and accurate numbers in there. And oh, um, that makes shame. you sound very, very German. Yeah. Mm. It's the numbers, man. It's the facts. <laughs> you need to, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, what's, uh, so you, you speak two languages. No, I, I, I absolutely don't. Um, I, I do like that little bit. Like that, surely you would speak more French just from. Bleu. I don't really speak French. I just pretend to. But like mm. that would be more than my German. That, okay. You know that thing that I. Right. You know what I'm like. You can pretend for like half an hour and then you have to run off. Yeah, absolutely right. Before you're being found out. And if I. Like, I just. It, the, it's so exhausting in my head to speak German. Because like, you have to translate everything in your head. Yeah, and, and, then, and then whip it around and then search for the vocabulary. And, then, and the thing is, when you actually do speak a foreign language, you don't have to think, you just speak it. Yeah. Because that means you really speak it when you're not translating in your head. Because you're thinking you just, in English because you're speaking in English, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, when I'm here, yeah. Like, yeah. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm not translating in my head. Yeah, you're just speaking. Yeah. That's interesting. And like, do you, when you search for a word, do you search for it in German or do you search for it in English? I don't know. What do you mean search for it? Like in my head or like, like online? Like in your, in your head where you're kind of like, oh, what is that? What's that word that I'm looking for? It really depends. I think if I'm, mm. sometimes I, I, I find it interesting to, because they're both Germanic languages, obviously kind of like, yeah. you know, they're all based on the same, the, 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 the based false, on our language. The false, thinking. the false friend. Yeah, the, and that's the false friend. That's very interesting. And then also the other way around that you, um, they're, they're completely different words sometimes, completely different words, yeah. and they mean the same thing. And you're like, how did that happen? Yeah, and I, I'm fascinated by that. Well, it's like, yeah, I think learning German, like the most interesting thing for me was learning about English because, like, in Australian schools, you don't learn grammar, yeah. or anything like that. You never that. learn the grammar of your own language until yeah. either you learn another language or somebody who's learning your language asks you a question about it. You're like. <laughs> I don't know how we do it. 
Yeah, it's magic. Sorry, I just, I just, I got told how to do it. I didn't, yeah. got, I'm didn't get told why. Just a user, not a programmer. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Like it's like a computer. I can't do shit. Yeah. Um, I can tell you where to find it, but I, I can't, I can't tell you why. And then they tell you a rule, and you're like, hang on, that totally makes sense. <laughs> Never thought about it. Totally <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> that checks out. Yeah. All right. So, sorry. One, one more back to the game show. Wheel of Fortune, best game show. What was the worst? game show was there just one that was just such a dumb oh idea? that's a very easy um, easy question to answer yes. because like i produced a late night erotic quiz on german television nice and that was so terrible where they, they had like the girls had like little stickers on their nipples nice um just, tassels good yeah and it was just horrendous so what were the, and were they the, were porn stars emceeing it well, porn, why do we always say porn stars they were porn actresses porn actresses well, and they were they were very porn. they were far away from being stars okay these, like, these weren't the top of the game no nah, they were definitely not stars okay and they In no definition whatsoever would justify <laughs> <laughs> us to call them stars so yeah. they were porn well nowadays we should say actors right because it has to be gender neutral I mean, I, that, there was a big push for that back in the day, but I think they've kind of gone off that now. Okay, so they're From, back to being porn actresses? I guess so, just like porn. Yeah, we, we say stars, don't we? Yeah. In, in my head, my, my, my brain doesn't want to say anything but porn star. Yeah, but it's the only job where you're a star just by doing it. Yeah. There, and no, there's no other, but you wouldn't say like, I don't know, there's like, he's a... Porn model? A butcher star or something. But no, you're just a butcher. <laughs> Even if you're the best butcher. But the funny thing is like, it's an amateur porn star. It's like, how can um, you be an amateur star? That cancels each other out, doesn't it? It's an oxymoron. It's, yeah. yeah. Mm. We're back. We're back to oxymorons. Yeah. So they were hosting it. So it's just They were the, hosting it, yeah. Porn and stars well known for their ability to act. Oh, they were. They were so good. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful. So but it was also fun, obviously. And then they were yeah. I mean, those two girls, they were I know that it sounds like a cliche, but it wasn't a cliche. It was actually true. So they were addicted to having sex, right? Right. That's why they became porn actresses. Sure. And not the other way around, I think. So they weren't like suddenly, you know, enjoying it so much that they couldn't get enough. No, they were just like, I love this thing. I love it. I if you love what you do, paid for it. Yeah. never yeah, work, you a, day never work a day in your life. That's exactly what they <laughs> um, Wow. So yeah. then after the show, I remember like one of the, the episodes at night. So we did it at night live, obviously. And then it was over. At one Wait, point. it was live? It was live because people could call in and participate. And that was half of the kind of like secret of that success because people could then communicate with, with those women. So it was like a phone sex line where you could win stuff. Yeah, but officially there was no phone sex. It was just right. you could talk to them and they were, they were talking like this. And, yeah, but, and, then the pe <laughs> and then it was very creepy because the contestants were obviously all male or most of them. Yeah. And then the, some of them were like super creepy, and it was, yeah. some, and some of them were just like very factual. I would like to tell you the right answer. <laughs> you know? Some people would be like, "This is the easiest quiz ever." Yeah, and the, some others were like, "I don't even care about the answer." Oh no, this sounds great though. This yeah, it was, sounds it was very great. good. And then the, the, those two presenters, I, I have to call them presenters because that was what they did. Was their but job? They weren't really yeah. presenters. They were presenting then. They were presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever they were presenting, they were presenting something. Sure. And then after the show was over, they said, do you want to come back to our hotel room with us? We'd like to have some fun. And, um, you know, because that's what we do. You got the invite. And I'm like, I don't know if you got this whole thing right, but I'm, this, is not, I'm, this is not a porn film we're shooting here. Okay? <laughs> that's just your background. Okay. This is like a TV show. <laughs> So I did go with him. No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't. You didn't? No, I didn't. Uh, you had but your... I know two of my colleagues did. You, you had know? your professional producer hat on. You were I like, did look. Have it. I did have it on. I don't know if we could have a working I was the relationship. Only one. <laughs> I was the only one wearing anything. That's in true. That moment. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my producer hat. That was your producer hat. Yeah. That was all. A lot of nudity on that set. Yeah, that was a crazy show. So it was late at night, live, it, nightly, weekly? Yeah, it was. How often? I think, how, was it twice a week? I don't know. I've, I've kind of like... Blocked it out. Yeah, I've tried to get over it. <laughs> but it was an interesting experience and I was this is now a while ago I was I think I was 25 or so right so and 25 and you had the morality to be like no I don't want to go back to the hotel room and have some fun yeah but also you haven't seen those porn actresses those two right were like, yeah. this was kind of intimidating yeah that would have been like without sounding disrespectful like being asked if you wanted to drive a, a very old used car that has been <laughs> <laughs> like a rental car that has been used by many different tourists sure. over the years and you're just like, in this little um, coastal town right you're just like I don't know about this yeah I'm this not really no this sounds dangerous yeah so but that was definitely an experience and um, right 
Yeah. And then that was that was the porn actresses. That, well, yeah. Were, were the questions porn related or just kind of like what's the capital of Mongolia? Yeah, no, it had nothing to do with it. It wasn't <laughs> exotic or uh, erotic at all. It was just completely like a normal game show. Right. With that extra element. Just a bit of, bit of titillation. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Man, I fucking... That's one of the things about Germany that I really... Like when you're there, you just see like an advertisement on like a building. Like, you know, it's not like a TV thing. It's just a poster. Yeah. And there's boobs on it. Yeah. Like, it's like much... Like in Australia, that's not going to happen. In the UK, it's not going to happen. Yeah. There's less of like a prudish approach. Yeah, in Germany, like everybody's naked. It's like especially yeah. in the East, you go to like a, a, a beach or a swimming pool or whatever, just everybody's half naked, you know? Or we go to the sauna yeah. in Germany with our friends and we're naked. Yeah, and it's like really a different cares. approach. Yeah. Do you think and that's... also sex is not, like, there's not much of a taboo when it comes to sex. And in Britain, people are very prudish, obviously. And on stage, you can tell. And when they're drunk, when they get really drunk in Britain, they go crazy because then they suddenly they have sex behind the bins you know, and all that. <laughs> Because normally they have, everybody has to hold back. And in right. Germany, it's like people are like, we don't have to hold back. We're yeah. just, and there's no sex behind bins. Yeah, well, we need to go behind this bin. We'll go yeah. in front of the bin. Yeah, exactly. We're proud. Yeah. We're proud of our bodies. Be the bin. <laughs> <laughs> don't hide behind it. Be the bin. That's funny. Oh, so wait. All right. We got... Oh, sorry. I'm so glad we talked about the game show thing. That's, oh, yeah. I, cause game, I had forgotten about it, you know? Game shows are the funniest. Like, yeah. They're just such a funny concept. And like... the. Because everyone likes knowing stuff and everyone likes winning stuff. So the ideas can be so poorly thought out. Yeah. And they're still viable. Yeah. You know, like it's not like a sitcom where it's like, ah, that's been done. And it's like, no, just like, all right, what's the thing? Well, we've got these two, um, we've got these general knowledge questions, but there's this other show where they do general knowledge questions. What if we have two porn stars who are naked present it and people call in? Sounds great. Yeah. Brain light. Let's do it. (laughs) Get it, make it happen. Great. I think we've got an audience of creepy men. Yeah. Ideally, you can write the concept on like, like a beer mat. A know, beer, yeah, like a coaster. Ta- yeah, a or a coaster. Mat. Yeah, coaster. Don't you say beer mat? No, is that here? Is that a UK thing? Beer mat? It's it's a thing somewhere. I don't know if it's in Britain or in America. Be- beer mat. Beer Maybe mat. that we... might be the North American term. And oh. here they say coaster. No, I think here they say beer mat. Well, in Australia, it's definitely coaster. Okay. Yeah. No, just, I mean... It's the same thing anyway. Yeah, everyone yeah. knows. Everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. But beer mat just sounded like that kind of like German efficiency, like, you know, two nouns pushed together. Yeah. It's but like we a mat for the beer, a beer mat. Right. Yeah. But we would call it beer deckel, which is a, a like a, a deckel is more like a lid for ah, some reason. That doesn't make much sense beer. because you can cover the beer, I think, when there's like a wasp approaching it or so. <laughs> Is that a big thing in Germany? It is in the summer. It is a massive thing. A lot of wasps approaching your beer because people drink like we drink shandy as well. Yeah, right. Um, and um, so that obviously has sugar in it. Mm. Because beer in Germany can't have any sugar in it. What is that like, Not a... like in Belgium? And beer, there's a law for that. Obviously, there's a law for everything in Germany. Of course, no and sugar, no sugar in beer. Deutsches Reinheitsgebot. That's the name of the law. Right. Why is there no sugar in beer? Is it just a health thing? Beer can only have three ingredients, and that's why. And that's how seriously the Germans take beer. Yeah. Like I got to say, when I lived there, I thought I got way less hungover in Germany. Yeah, because there's no sugar in it. When I go to Belgium and I have a beer, one beer, I feel it the next day. Yeah. And in Germany, you can have like a few more. Yeah. And like the, Bel- the, the percentage in Belgium is like... Some of them goes up to like 12%. Yeah. And they just, and they just drink it like it's nothing. Yeah, it's crazy. They give you this like tiny little glass mm. that's like got mainly head. And yeah. then you're just like just sipping. You're like, what's this tiny ass thing? And then you're like, oh, it's a 12% beer. And you're like, oh, fuck. And then the next day you can't, you can't figure out why you had sex behind that bin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> right, right, right. Something happened between the bin With and one the of thing. the contestants from that game show. Oh, I would love to see. What was it called? Oh, how did I forget that? What was the show called? Do you remember? The, the erotic game show. Well, it's hard to translate because it was called Bitte Freimachen, which means, which is what a doctor would say to a woman when she should take off her top or to a man as well. But um, it's also what it says on a letter for some reason uh, telling you to put a stamp on it. And it, for some reason, it's the same. It's right. hard to explain why, but it's the same, exactly the same phrase. Yeah. And we call it the show that because it has like two or three different meanings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also very obviously aiming towards people who are taking their top off. Right. Okay. So it's like who want to see somebody take their top off? Yeah. Right. 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 So it's like, yeah. Please remove your. Please remove your top. Like yeah. Bit of front marking. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm with that. Oh, that's a great title. Because what we did was like somebody co- like it, this is crazy. I know this is so sexist, but it's a while ago and <laughs> things were different. Uh, back it's, then. it's like Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. No, but what we did is that like, we had like ten girls sit there, ten models, and they were the prize. You know, they were the prize. They were sitting there, and you would win four boobs. That would be the money that you would win. You know, 
And then I know this sounds horrendous, but Wait, so sorry. like, and then the women. So you won. Let's say the contestant won. Yeah. And then the women would open their bras. Yeah. And then you'd the say, bikini tops. And then on every uh, breast there would be um, an amount, and th <laughs> their their nipples were covered with that amount. The so you would win. Let's say you would win four breasts. Yeah. So then, you know, two of the uh, two of the ladies would open their their bras, and then you, those four breasts would the sum of those four breasts would be your prize money. Would be the dollar, like the euros amount. Yeah, it'd be like forty and one hundred and twenty, and then you know sixty, and I don't know what. So then, you're telling me this is like deal or no deal with the suitcases, but it's a woman's. Basically, chest. yes. Basically, yes. <laughs> and it said on the screen you can win four breasts oh my of God. money or something. You just. You can't get away with shit like that anymore, can you? That would just be yeah, it unacceptable. Seems, it seems long ago. It's only 12 years ago, 15 maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because like, you know how people are like, ah, oh, you know, comedians, you can't say what you want to say on stage anymore. You totally can. You can. But you, you, could can't. Still, you could still make that game show as well, I think. You reckon you could get away you, with that? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Oh. What hours was it on? Like 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. kind of vibe? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, man, that's that's so funny. That's what, oh, I... I, was, I brought you on here to talk about bloody Brexit and stuff. And I'm like, this yeah. is way more interesting. This is, this is also more accessible, I think, for everybody <laughs> as a topic. You don't need to do any light reading to right. understand. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Oh, dear. So you, you went from that world. Okay, we got through the game show stuff. And I'm so glad we did. Absolutely. And now you're full-time stand-up. <laughs> I'm glad you just like, yeah, like going to comedy. Like, well, this is very professional. Right. <laughs> I've seen it enough breasts now. No, I did like on the side, I did stand-up all the time. All the time. All the time. So, so when did you start? You must have been quite young. Yeah, 2002. Um, I was 23. 23? Yeah, I'm turning same, 40 in a couple of days. Same, same age I started, 23. Yeah, great. Yeah. Good age, right? Good, I think yeah. good age. How They're, old are you now? 29. Okay, cool. Yeah. Those, those people who start really young freak me out. Mm. Like, when it used to be young 23 now it's, you know now it's nothing now it's too late to start at 23 yeah, you have like, to be a superstar by 23 otherwise that's over. it yeah Never you get the glass Netflix ceiling now. when you're 24 <laughs> that's the age ceiling for, it's the age for, man that's the comedy you know the only thing left is game shows where people yeah you know i could host the game show mm. no tits i'd still host one i'd do it i'd do it with or without <laughs> <laughs> no that's but it's not, not a negotiating <laughs> thing yeah but then i so 23 i started and then i um did it for quite a few years um, on the side in Europe in exclusively well, wherever Europe? I lived so like in Europe and Argentina then, but, but it was, yeah in Argentina as well in Spanish wow. then yes and um, yeah but never really in German so that only came much later so now I do it in German too obviously but, sure um, so you started in English in English did it for a long time only in English and then did Spanish? a little bit of Spanish but only not many gigs that was more sure. like a fun thing and then then moved to London okay um, so what, what year is this? Like 2000? 2009. 2009. Mm. 10 years ago? Yeah. Hey. 10 years. Yeah. I did King Gong pretty quickly, that competition at the comedy store. For, for anyone unaware, the King Gong, very famous in the UK. They don't do gongs anywhere else. Right. This, this country has a love for public cruelty. Yeah. That I've yeah, never it's like, seen. It's like a proper like, like Roman game, you know? Like yeah. Really, like, it's like a really boring version of Gladiators. Like there's, there's I, would, I wouldn't violence. say boring. It's phenomenal. Oh know? no! Just like I mean, there's no, there's no lions. Well, but it feels like there are quite a few lions in the room. So what? You, if you haven't seen it, just to the audience, right? You, you've I've seen it, right? I've never seen it. Oh, you've never seen it. Okay. I, I, I get very, I feel very sad when people are bombing really hard. But th it's a fun show. But it's also don't take it seriously. Yeah. I the funniest thing I've ever seen in a comedy club was at King Gong. Sure. Luckily, not the show that I was on, but I, was, I watched the show. Um, Simon is the name of the co-host. He's the offstage host, right? So he's yeah. the bad cop. And then there's a good cop on stage. Um, and the good cop, so the comedian, the MC, would try to be nice to people, but also sometimes, you know, make fun of them when they were terrible, whatever. Yeah, of course. And Simon's role would be the role of the bad cop. Is it voice of God? Like it's the voice of God, microphone? yeah. 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 yeah nice. And Simon would announce the, the number of minutes ideally sometimes seconds that the person survived because <laughs> when you get second. three red cards from the audience the audience they have, there are three judges in the audience they yeah. get one card each and the MC selects those people and then when one card goes up Simon the voice of God would say one card 
right. and then the second card, two cards, three cards, and then the person gets gonged off, and then another one bites the dust by queen is being played, right? Nice. And then Simon, the voice of God, would announce the time that the person has lasted. For yes. example, three minutes, 55 seconds, you know? Sure. And make a funny comment normally, and whatever. Yeah. So now the funniest thing I've seen was somebody did a terrible job. Of course. And it was like, obviously, because it's a, it's a talent show. You know, you see people who have no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was this guy, and it was painful to watch, and he was racist, and he was sexist, and he yeah. wasn't funny, and nobody liked him, and it was just terrible. For some reason, the cards didn't go up quickly, because sometimes the judges enjoy their power, and they're like, I want to see what the guy says next. Yeah. And everybody's like, put the card up. This, this could definitely get worse. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's, let's watch this thing play out. And it's like, yeah. then it's like a car accident in slow motion. So, <laughs> and then, so finally, this guy gets gonged off after, let's say, two minutes. 35 seconds, right? Yeah. And Simon says, two minutes, 35 seconds. And I must say, I've been doing the show for 12 years. Yeah. That's the worst performance I've ever seen, <laughs> which is obviously very funny. And then <laughs> the next guy goes up, horrible, right? Just terrible. Yeah. Gets gonged off after 17 seconds. 17, 17 seconds. And wow. Simon says, 17 seconds. And I do have to apologize to the previous guy. <laughs> No, just, that is the the show. It's just brilliant. That's funny. Mm. Well, so that was your that was your first gig over here. You decided to step up to the gong. It wasn't the first one, but I, it was in the very beginning. And right. um, I had done quite a few open mics and everything. I had done gigs at the Edinburgh Festival and sure. then come down to London and then did a few open mics, a couple of club nights and then King Gong. And how did and, the gong go? Well, luckily I won it and um, I survived the five minutes. Right. Two other people did as well and then there was like a like a joke off in the end so you have sure. to do a minute each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the audience decides after that minute who, they just like buy applause who the winner is. Right. You know? And then you get like a 10 minute spot sometimes a five minute spot now it's a five minute spot And I remember it used. To, they gave me a 10 minute spot for some reason quickly. Yeah. And um, but then I had to do quite a few of those, and then I got into into into, the into getting paid work. Yeah. And then were you were you living here full time at that stage, like in 2009? Yeah, I was here full time. Then I was couch surfing, trying to find my way into the city, right? And into living in London, and then at, 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 yeah, a few months later, I think I just kind of settled down. Yeah. But and it then, was all a big adventure. Yeah, well, that but so that was that like you quit the producing. You're yeah, like, I'm going to go to the UK. I've done comedy in English. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I made really good money, and then I I quit that job, and I made <laughs> no money. Yeah, well, I mean, no, no one, just nothing, just nothing for ages. You were just like, this is hard. But yeah. you had some savings, sure. You seemed like a yeah, sensible. Yeah, I, I, obviously, yeah. I yeah. saved I saved some money. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. I think. Right. But um, but obviously, also, I didn't want to retire. I was 28, 29. I was like, I need to make money. You know. Yeah. And I want this to be my career because I knew, I, well, I had done it many years and then I knew it worked. I knew I was funny. I knew people were laughing. I knew I got work, yeah. but I wanted to see if I could make it in London. Right. Because the here the competition, obviously, as, you, as you've seen, yeah, absolutely. some of them are just phenomenal, obviously. And especially live here, like I don't think, you know, there's just this history of live comedy. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. And they're like excellent live acts that you've never really seen on TV. No, it's brilliant. No, I've absolutely. You go to, the, to some of the places like the Comedy Store and some other clubs, And it's just unbelievable. I remember the first time I did those 10 minutes, the unpaid yeah. spot. I felt, because I had done so many gigs in several countries, and I always, it, always, it then started to work almost every time. So I was like, I'm quite funny. I think I can do this. I went there, and I saw the other comedians, the pro acts. Yeah. And they were in a different league. And you I'm were like, just like, oh, shit. I'm like, I think I'm going <laughs> to leave, you know? <laughs> and, but then obviously that was the next goal, then to, to, being, to be able to compete with them, you know, on, and yeah. be on that level. And I knew it would take me years, but then eventually, okay. you know. It, so how, uh, many, how many years were you kind of full-time in London? Um, quite a few years, yeah. So like, I don't know how many exactly, but quite a few until I then in 2012 mm. started to work in Germany, 2013, started to work in Germany and then did more and more also in Germany. And now I'm commuting between the two yeah. and doing it. But it's, it's a quick, it's like a one-hour flight. So it's easy to do both countries. Yeah, but that's, I think that's quite rare that like you're the first kind of comedian I've spoken to who kind of splits their time mm, yeah. between like a European country and in German. Yeah. It's all in German? It's all in German, yeah. yeah. And then like uh, London, all yeah. in English. Yeah. Like you, is, is it the same jokes or is it different? No, it's like very few jokes are the same. Most of it's very different. That's what I would have thought, yeah. Because, because you saw my act on Thursday and yeah. I, I talk a lot about Britain. Obviously, of course. And life yeah. here and London and everything. And in Germany, that's not relevant, obviously. So it's, it's different stuff. Yeah, I've spoken to other comics who do kind of like there's an Italian guy. I don't know if you know Fre Francesco De Carlo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like he says that even his demeanor on stage is different. Like he's a different person in Italian than he is in okay. English. 
I'm also a different person in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm. I feel like I'm the same guy. I'm this. It's the same comedy, but it's just like um, here. Uh, well, I guess, I guess here it's a little bit when you do the clubs. The it, it's a higher kind of like frequency, a higher kind of like punch rate. So you sure. have to be like, especially at the store or the Glee, the big clubs. You have to be bam, 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 bam. You know. Yeah. You have to be funny all Whereas the time. Whereas in Germany, they'll let you speak a bit more and. Yeah, I would say like I also try to be like when I when I do a set in Germany in a club, I also try to be like that, bam, bam, bam. But um, but also they they would be they they don't drink as much, so they don't you know you don't get a very rowdy crowd right. like in Britain. Some it's, club some clubs here you have to be if you're not funny, 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 they will then take over. Yeah, and they kind of lose interest, yeah. and like they talk to their mate who they're drinking right, with. And right. So Germany is it more like theater style? Like there's yeah. less tables, less jugs of beer. Yeah, but it's like people, here's the show. Yeah, people wouldn't drink that much. That's the main difference, you know. Right. So, when you get a, cl- a crowd in Britain where people don't drink much, in, yeah, you know, on a Thursday in a small town, whatever, where people have a little bit more, kind of like maybe calm and everything. Mm. It, that's very similar to what you get in Germany. So people okay, don't get right. hammered, you know. Yeah. So like, as a, in in terms of um, do people yeah. drink a lot in Australia when they go to a, to a to a gig? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I think I think we kind of have a very similar culture to the english it's just that we don't go out as much okay like i think i think england goes out more than any country in the world like right. i think yeah. i think yeah. like that's their like defining uk thing it's like yeah. they're out of their apartment they're watching something live they're going to a band they're going to a, a, the pub they're going to yeah. a comedy they're going to sport like they're just out yeah and like that's their great quality yeah i think that's true yeah it's a very kind of like everybody tries to be social a lot yeah and that's a great thing, yeah. But um, it's just it has to be with alcohol, you know. That's a, it can be that can be intense. Oh man, when you're I've, not used to it, and I wasn't used to it, and I'm still not used to it. When you go out, and you ha- everybody's getting smashed. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, like, and you're like oh man, I can't can't do that. I drink so much more here mm. without even trying. Like in Australia, like I'll, I'll drink a bit or whatever because comedy, you know, it's a kind of mm. it's a drinking based activity totally. a lot of the time. Totally, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, here it's just it's crazy to just to to duck it for like. You know, three days a week. To not drink for three days a week mm. is hard. Yeah, and also here you go out and you don't want to drink, and people say, "Come on, man, have yeah. a drink." I probably did that to you on Thursday. <laughs> it's just like you're you probably did, yeah. Come on. Yeah, so I was look. I was drinking on Thursday, yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Now it's Monday today. So far, no drinks, but like the last four days, yes. And even if it was just one beer, you know, but still. Well, that's the thing. On Saturday, I was like, I didn't drink on Saturday. My girlfriend's like, you didn't have to drink anything, and I'm like, no, I had. I had one beer, but that doesn't count. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> and that's that's the British standards now. Yeah, yeah, that's just the vibe. But, but it's great. Also, like I don't want to, I don't want to um, slack people off or like the culture off because the, I really, really enjoy that. That people here go out, drink a lot, and you get like a lot of energy in the room, you know. And they're really they want to have a great time. Yeah. And to them, it's very relevant if the next two hours are fun or not fun, you know. Yeah. Which I think is great. And in elsewhere, when you go to like Germany or Sweden or wherever, quite often you get the feeling people sit there they kind of enjoy it but it's not really that relevant to them if it's going to be great or not they don't need you the yeah. same way that english right. people do and here you feel like okay it's friday night they've had a tough week they're they already drunk yeah and this better be good they're, because they need you to be good and they want to have a great time yeah they pay as shit the weather's bad yeah like they're they're, they're gross looking people you know they need you <laughs> they need you to be good australia is like well the comics are the most gross looking in the room but uh, oh, of course yeah. we're, we're yuck mm. but um no it's, it's funny because in australia like i think that's the main issue with comedy because it's just not as big as it is here and it's like in Australia, you don't need the comedian to be funny. Yeah. Like you've got a great quality of life. It's incredibly safe. Mm. You get paid well. The sun's out. Whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, you can get as much enjoyment going for a walk, which that, is yeah. readily yeah, right, available right, right, to you. Right, 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 right. Just get a dog. Yeah. But it's in Britain, it's the same thing. If you go to like places that are a little bit, you know, daft and a bit miserable and like a bit, a bit economically, you know, mm. worse off, mm. you would normally have the best gigs. Oh, totally. And you go to like a really, really beautiful place in the West Country or wherever, you know, where you're like, yeah, it's not going to be a great gig. It's going to be okay, you know? Yeah, because they don't need you as much. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, man, I couldn't, couldn't agree more on that. Um, but okay, so you're splitting your time now. Could you operate full-time in Germany as a comedian? Yeah, make yeah, yeah. enough Make enough money. Yeah, yeah. Have a comfortable living. Yeah. Be creatively fulfilled. Yeah, well, there will be some things would be missing, obviously, if sure. I was in Germany full-time because um, I need the rough side of things, you know, that I get here. Right. Like, in Germany, like, the, the 
you're being treated very well as a comic quite often. You always get like travel money and you get like a nice dressing room and this kind of stuff most of the time. Mm. And in Britain, I kind of like it that you're like, sometimes you're like in a place with like no proper toilet, you're backstage, you know, <laughs> it smells. You know, but there's a fridge full of beer. There's comics who are all funny and in a great mood or in yeah. a shit mood, but it's still fun. Yeah. And then you go onto a tiny little stage. There's no sound check. It's all, it's right. rock and roll. It's really proper underground rock and roll. And I, I would completely miss that if I was in Germany full time. Interesting. So like kind of the grit of this scene, like that's something that's valuable. The kind of like, yeah, the, the bootleg version of like a, <laughs> a comedy. And also, the, the, and also get like a proper aggressive heckle at times, you know. Right. I, I, I enjoy rough gigs at times, you know. So Germans won't heckle? Not that much, no. Very rarely would you get at Christmas shows. People would be a little bit louder because you get groups in and everything. And right. Still, but generally, no. And and I love also like here. I love a lot of comics. You know, I love working with quite a few um, comics because the quality here is really, really high. Yeah, and I love that. And I think that's cool here. Like, I've mm. definitely enjoyed meeting English and like you know British comedians because just like they've been in the game a long time. Oh, they've yeah. got interesting things to say. Yeah, they've seen a lot. Totally. Like, you know, when you talk to them, they're like, they're not talking to you with like, you know, I've been going like six years. They're not talking to you with like seven years, eight years experience. They're mm. talking to you with 15, yeah. 20 years experience. And you're just like, oh, fuck. Okay. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Like you know? y- yesterday, I um, I saw a friend of mine, John Maloney. Have you worked with him? Very, very I funny. think I know the name. I don't, mm. I don't know the guy. Very good English comic. And he's... Um, he's been going... I asked him yesterday because I didn't really know how long he'd been going. He'd been going for 34 years. That's now, crazy. 34 just... I'm 39, so I was five <laughs> when he started. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And um, you can tell, you know, he's just bulletproof on stage and he's fantastic and he's, um, and that's great to hang out with those people and they still, they, they do stand up and it's not like when you, in other countries, you quite often see those people then kind of like shift into a different direction, maybe like suddenly do more music or be more political or whatever, but no. Here they do stand up. They tell jokes. Yeah, live know. on stage yeah. in a club. Very it's simple. Not TV. It's not radio. Yeah. It's stand up. It's beautiful, and it's just like it's it's almost like unplugged music. You know, it's just like so simple and so basic. Yeah, and they don't say, "Ah, oh, suddenly oh, I want to become like a, a TV writer, or whatever." No, they do stand up, and they love it. And That's it's great. interesting. So, but like, what's the German comedy scene like now? Is it quite developed? Because you're saying yeah, what yeah. in 2002 it was just kind of starting like there was like that's when it was well there was in germany it started in the 90s um okay. so there were a few comics who became very big in the 90s yeah. and um Do, any names like would any of them have translated to well not really i think there, there's some that did stuff in english as well michael mittermeier not to I've be heard, confused with michael mcintyre yeah, yeah i heard this on thursday mm. like um yeah it's it like yeah michael mittermeier the big german comedian i'm like yeah real funny and yeah. they're like no no no, it's a real person and yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah are you sure it's funny because he came to London once and then the MC said his name wrong. He said, we've got a surprise guest on the bill. Here's Michael McIntyre. And he walked <laughs> on and, and people were like, who is this guy? Who's yeah. Michael Mittenmeyer? That's not Michael McIntyre. That's so funny. So there are a few who are big in the 90s and then the scene kind of like developed and then now it's become much younger and more stand-up kind of like heavy and, you know. Right. And it's good. It's a good scene. And um, it's... But it's again, it's not as rock and roll and underground as the scene in Britain. But right. it's, it's still, it's, it's, it's a good scene. It's a really... But you can make scene. a living off it. You can... Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. TV devoted to yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, like yeah. All that stuff. It's all getting around. Just because yeah. I've been to like Estonia and Poland and stuff where mm. things are like just kind of happening now. Yeah. Like it's not... You no, know, Germany, they have been like really big things already in the past. You sure. Know, so. And do you, do you have more profile in Germany or in England? Well, I do in Germany. I do more TV stuff, so I'd be on sure. TV quite regularly. And in, in Britain, but the club the clubs would be the same, you know. So I do the big clubs here. I do the big yeah. clubs in Germany. Sure, I MC. I do sets, you know. Yeah, so that's very similar. But I would say, yeah, TV is a different thing in Germany. I would do more there. Right, and yeah. is that does that mean like in Germany you get to tour, like, or is it just the clubs? Still? I do it's my solo shows. Yeah, so I do yeah. tour, and um, yeah, that's good fun. Yeah, so you get you get like people down like what what kind of what kind of size venues are like a hundred, just like a hundred. Okay, but cool. It's, yeah, but it's, it's no, just because just because I yeah I've just been like when I've done these shows in like Poland and Estonia and stuff, it's like these guys have been doing comedy for like three years, four years. Yeah, and they're doing like thousand seat things just because yeah. no one's seen it before right like well, we have people like, in Germany. We have people who do massive places, obviously. Right. So we have one guy who. Still holding the world rec- record, I think he did like seventy five thousand three nights in a row Whoa. in a football stadium. Yeah, so he's massive. Who, what's what's that gentleman's name? Mario Bart. Mario Bart. Yeah, and he's massive. 
Sounds like Mario Kart. That's weird. right. It does sound like Mario Kart. Yeah. <laughs> Mario and he, Kart. All he does was well, he still does it. Like he talks about men and women. All, that's all he does. Really? Yeah. Men, and, women, men, women, men, women. That's all. Girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend. And then and Germans like this is great. Tell me enough more. Germans think it's great. Yeah. Wait, is that? Can it's I, technically very good. This can I technically, a, but I don't. Yeah. Can I take a guess? Is he is he a, a Bavarian dude? No, he's from Berlin. Really? Mm. Oh. In my head, I'm just like, I can just see this like Bavarian crowd coming out. No, Bavaria is a whole different story. But like, well, that's, that's what I mean. Like people, mm. I, I find that because I just because I guess because I studied it a bit and lived there. Like people really collapse Germany. It's like one big country. And like, it's not really. There's like a lot of different areas with right. different. Yeah, Germany is like unlike Britain and, and, and France and other countries. It's very kind of like um, diverse because we don't have a centralized system. We don't have one city that is kind of like the center exactly. of the whole country. And uh, Berlin is not even very relevant in Germany. So um, it's just a political center, but it's in terms of economy. So the funny thing is, um, most countries, if you took away London out of the British economy, yeah. the economy would drop by, I think, around whatever, 50% or so. If you took out Paris from France, it would drop by like 50%. And if you took out Berlin from Germany, the economy would actually be stronger. <laughs> so, that, so that's how... Uh, yeah, Berlin's like a cultural thing. It's not yeah, indu- it's, well, the industry, industry is all in Frankfurt, it's a luxury. right? Well, that's it. No, it's it's not in one place. You know, that's oh, the it's thing. like it's the financial everywhere. industry. Financial services are in Frankfurt. The banks and everything. Car industry is around Stuttgart in the southwest, and then you yeah. have like advertising in Hamburg, and so it's all kind of like okay, you know, different so it's, places. Yeah, there's lots of different bits. Okay, mm-hmm. well, so all right, we we should talk a little bit about Brexit, but I, I don't know, talking to you compared to the other people because I've spoken to George Zach and mm-hmm. Mickey Overman who. Like, you know, they live here full time. Yeah. George has been here for like 17 years or something. Yeah, he's been here for ages, yeah. And Mickey's been here for like four. Mm-hmm. So like, they're kind of like, if Brexit happens, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Whereas from your position, it seems like, well, I can just spend slightly more time in Germany and then just tour over here. That's the difference. <laughs> That's the difference between the Greek economic planning and the German economic planning, you know? <laughs> I um, love that you're just getting proper EU about it. It's right. like, yeah, we prop them up. Like, yeah, what, right, what do you want? Right, right. I will supplement George's comedy career if it happens. <laughs> Again. <laughs> no, so like, yeah, like I'm, we'll see. We don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. Yeah. And if anybody says they do know what's going to happen, that it's just, it's just a step in the dark. So we don't know. Well, I've been using that um, to get out of Brexit conversations because people yeah. in Australia ask me, they're like, well, if people say they know, then they don't know. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, nobody So does. clearly I understand the situation perfectly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's all it's all crazy, and nobody knows what's going to happen. People who are negotiating the outcome don't yeah. know what they want, so nobody knows what's going to happen. Right. So, I I don't know. But if if worst comes to worst, I will have to obviously um, uh, work maybe only in Germany and the rest of continental Europe, and not. But I, I think I'll be able to do Britain. But it's going to be more complicated. It's going to be more paperwork. Yeah. And all that, you know. And that kind of that that is that seems to be it. It's like most people will be able to stay, but it just overcomplicates. Yeah. What was otherwise a very simple process. Yeah, and then, I mean, the, the, what will the promoter say? Will the promoter book a German or a Greek comic right. if it makes his life harder? Or I will he not you. say, you know what, let's just book another English guy or an English girl, that's, you know? And obviously that would be understandable. Yeah, that's really interesting because my, my girlfriend, because we moved here kind of, I guess, like after the vote when people are still kind of right. preparing for it. And um, she doesn't have full working rights because okay. we've got a two-year visa. But like, you know, it gives her full working rights for two years but not like a british citizenship yeah and so like when she'd apply they'd be like you know if you're a european citizen don't bother applying and if you don't have full working rights like as a british citizen don't bother applying yeah so like she's kind of in that boat where they're just like look it's just too much of a hassle Mm. to make our company revolve around this so yeah i never i never thought about it in terms of comedy promoters are what the like they're lazy people in general but also like i think you know what it's like you go to a party and you feel you're not wanted at the party you just leave yeah so but then again i'm also i also like to sometimes put my foot down and when somebody says you're not welcome here it's like you know just like annoy them a little yeah and, you know i'm gonna stay yeah overstay my welcome is that your beer yeah <laughs> i'm gonna drink just that go beer. to the fridge and just empty it <laughs> um, so we'll see i don't know but i'm i'm, yeah. I'm quite relaxed um, yeah if, if i was a romanian with a family here um, and my own little business i'd probably be very, very worried but like i'm a freelance german comic who has a career in germany too so i think and, and you split your time so i split my time so i can you know you it would be a shame it. obviously but i can you know yeah we'll see did, did you did you think 
Scotland might be the option, you know. Scotland, Scotland. leaving the uh, leaving Britain, yeah. staying in the European Union, so we can all still do Edinburgh. Just do know? that. Yeah. Well, it's a paperless festival. I don't know if you know. Right. As an Australian, no paperwork. Just say you're going to Edinburgh. Yeah. Go straight through. I know. Um, what was I? What was I going to say? Um, like, did you assume they would vote for Brexit, or were you surprised? No, by I, the result. I was very surprised. Like most people, I think. Yeah, I didn't. Well, see, everyone, did, you, did you did you see it coming? Absolutely not. Like yeah. I didn't even realize it was really happening. That's mm. like how far Australia is away from shit. You right, know? Like, right, right. Like Trump, I was following, but Brexit, I was just kind of like, ah, whatever. <laughs> I but, was on a TV show live as the results were coming in. So that was like a five-hour-long show where we were like a panel no of way. Uh, German and British people commenting on the results. And I was the comedian on the bill. And when you booked on those political shows, you always, you know, it's as a comic, you're being booked to lighten up the mood and all that. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah. And um, tough gig. <laughs> yeah, tough gig. After the first results came in from Sunderland in the north of England. Yeah. Um, the guy next to me, a very, very um, uh, smart politician, and he had um, predictions, you know, in front yeah. of him. And he said, look, hang on, this is looking bad. After the first results came in, you know, it was, there were just like many, many counties, but the first ones came in. And he said, this is looking bad. Right. If if this um, kind of like trend that we see in Sunderland will be the same for all the uh, counties and all the cities, Britain is going to leave, you know. And people were, la- we were all laughing at that point because we thought, come on, it's just one result. Yeah, go and on, in the man. end, it turned out he was exactly right. He got the predictions, you know. He nailed it. Um, yeah. So is this a British TV show that you're on? Like not a German that show? That was an international show for like, the, the you know, the German foreign television, like BBC World. Germany has Deutsche Welle. Okay, and yeah. And this was in English for their worldwide kind of feed with a couple of Brits and a couple of Germans on it, yeah. Interesting, okay. And that that was, the the mood turned pretty quickly and then after a few minutes it became like a funeral. Wow. And And I still tried to make some jokes but it was that people were like, no, this is kind of terrible. The pound has just dropped by like 10%. (laughs) Everyone's losing their jobs. So, oh man, that's so interesting that you're on the show and like, did you do some research for that? Were you kind of coming in hot or were you just ready yeah, yeah, for no, some I, gags? I did some research but I didn't do, because I knew they would do the factual research, you know, so I didn't right. want to do that because like I, I went, I did research, I talked to a lot of people and asked them um, what they would do in case of Brexit and how they expect the outcome to be. Yeah. So I was trying to be the kind of like the human voice and not the mathematical voice like all the others, you know. Right. So that's interesting. But it was it was a crazy show, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Just watching that all unfold, being yeah. like, holy shit. Um so wait. As as like um a German part this German Hang on, talk it, about- it was a bit more serious. That show was a bit more boring, dull and serious than that erotic Bitte Freimachen game show. Well, I mean, if they had the ladies from Bitte Freimachen to just come in. That would have been so... What a twist. What a plot twist in that, <laughs> on that show. <laughs> just right at the end, they just walk on. It's just like, if you think Sunderland's going to vote out, call yeah. in now. Um, but no, what, does, does Germany worry about Brexit? Just because Germany is what, probably like you consider the leader of the EU economically and, and politically as well, a lot. Like you guys have a lot of influence. Yeah, but so does Britain, and so does um, do all the, and, the big countries. But but like, were you worried about losing Britain? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. G- Germans love Britain, you know. Germans love England, and um, everybody wanted Britain to stay, obviously. Right. But now, because it's been so complicated, and Britain has been so complicated because of the <laughs> Tory party, um, a lot of people, I think, st- are starting to say, okay, look, we want you to stay, but mm. if it keeps going on like this, just leave, and then you come back at another time, you know. Oh, so you think the door would be open for them to come yeah, back? Yeah, definitely, always. Yeah, always. And everybody, like, nobody in Germany wanted Britain to leave. Nobody in France wanted Britain to leave. You know, it's just the other way around. Britain was like, we don't want to be part of this anymore for some reason. That's so interesting. It's very strange. Yeah, nobody really understood it because in Germany, Europe is a peace project. The European Union is a peace project, and in France, right. it's the same thing. So we know that as long as Germany, France, and Britain are at peace and Germany and Russia are at peace, you know, there's never going to be a war again in Europe. So yeah. the European Union is that. It's a peace project for all of us. Right. And that's why we say when somebody leaves it, like Britain wanting to leave it now, that is a problem because we, it's not... In Britain, everybody was talking about migration and economics. Mm. But in Europe, it's mainly um, a peace Right, you know, a, so a question we, of peace. If we stay linked economically and we have like a seat at the table politically, then we won't fight again. Right, exactly. Now yeah. everyone's got a voice. Yeah. Right. Right, that's so interesting. So there have been so many wars in Germany and in France. Obviously, quite a few started by, by Germany. But, right. um, but there has been no war in Britain, right? apart from a few airstrikes in the Second World War. But there have been, has been no war in this country. So it hasn't really felt that 
Yeah, so I feel like they don't... Necessary peace. Exactly. It's like they don't sure. see the European Union as much as a peace project. But in Germany and in France, it was like, we finally have had peace for 70 years. Yeah, this and, is great um, news. Yeah, it's We're so all talking Union to is, each other. Exactly. All the big powers are buddies. We're yeah. bailing out Greece. You know, this is good stuff. Yeah, it is. This is a good time. Yeah, that, that seems to be the vibe from like European people that Britain actually had a really good deal on the EU. The like, best deal, the best deal, because they always, they, they always got their way, you know, because everybody everyone's knew. like, no, stay in. We want you to stay Right, right, right. <laughs> so that's why it's hard to understand why they still wanted to, to leave. I mean, you know, pe- I think people were just unhappy with many other things and then they said, yeah, yeah, it, it does. now we get a vote, let's just say no. Yeah, I mean, it did seem like one of those really, you know, weirdly very similar to Trump. Just yeah. like, this isn't really about this. Yeah. But if we do this, then everyone will know that we're pissed off. Yeah. And then now, I still don't know. I still don't know if they're going to go. But you know that the day after the referendum, um, the most asked question on Google was uh, from Britain, what is the European Union? So the day after the referendum. <sighs> so it's all, you know. You've got you to love that. That's mm. always a good, a good sign. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> after the European Union. Well, what, sorry, one thing I was going to say, this is, this is way off topic, but I think with Brexit, that was beautifully covered. I can understand why they got you on a TV show. This is a man who can sum up the sentiment quickly. You think so? Okay. Yeah. I, well, I, I, thank I, you. I felt some wisdom imparted. You have a double barrel last name. I've never met a German person with a double barrel last name. It's before. a very common thing, though. Very common? Yeah. Really? Um, well, there are two ways. Mm-hmm. Um, um, if you want to get a, a, a double name in Germany, and especially with a hyphen in between, yeah. there are two ways. One is, in my case, it's Schulte Law. If Mr. or Mrs. Schulte marries Mr. or Mrs. Law, they yep. can put those two names together. A bit like in Spain, where everybody, where the kids always get the mother's last name and the father's last name. Yeah. And that then forms their new last name. And um, But in Germany, it's like if, if couples can decide to put both names together or they just decide to take one name, you know, or just keep their names, it doesn't matter. It's all whatever yeah. you want. But in my case, it's different because um, it is a name that's always been like that. So uh, Schulte is just a name that's very common in my area. And then because there were so many Schultes, they added like a local description. Like ah. Schulte, it would be like Schulte London, Schulte Manchester, whatever, right. wherever you're from. And in my case, law is an old word for a forest. So, okay. Yeah. So, so it's you're just, the, the Schulte like from the forest. Yeah. The shoulder from the forest. Absolutely. Nice. I'm the forest man. <laughs> the guy who suffers from hay fever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you had to, we had to move some flowers out of here. That was, that was serious business. The other thing... It's so... I feel because the thing is, you're from Australia. And mm. Australians in my head always... Although you're a very sophisticated guy, obviously. Thank you. But I feel Australians in my head are always kind of like... They're nature people, you know. You guys, you could kill mm. a crocodile and you could just, you know. I wouldn't like to. You wouldn't like to, to, but you could, yeah. <laughs> and you could, you know, you you know, you could just, you know, do things in nature. And I'm allergic to cats and of hay fever. Yeah. And well, I feel very weak. Well, do you, do you want a to fun fact? Mm, yeah, always. The highest incidence of asthma in the world, Australia. Australia. Really? There you go. Why is that? Um, oh, because of the ozone levels, probably. Uh, I think that. I think also because we're like a majority white country in a, in a land where white people are not accustomed. Right. It's not really your land. I mean, like in we're terms not, of... We're not, we're not used to the fauna. We're not mm. used to the flora. Like, you know, everything around there is like we're kind of adjusting to it. Um, and so our bodies probably react badly. Okay. But um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fun little fact. That's amazing. I'm not sure they asked everybody, though. There might be a country that's just not... That didn't take part in that survey. Yeah. Like Vatican City, they probably have the highest because they're all very old white people, aren't they? Yeah, but there's no nature in the Vatican City. Are you kidding me? No, there's but nothing, still... it's not a rock. Right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> there's not much nature there, you're right. Yeah. No, but that's, that's because, it's, I mean, it's really weird here. Like, I, got, I get excited in London whenever I see a bird that isn't a pigeon yeah. or a seagull or a duck. Yeah. You know, I'm like, this is bloody exciting. Whereas the only Australia, wildlife everywhere. In, yeah, the only wildlife in London are foxes. Yeah, that's night. still really cool. When I see great, a fox, yeah. I'm pumped. I'm I like, that's I love a good great. fox at night when you come home and they're eating a kebab out of a bin. Yeah. And there's two English people having sex behind the bin. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the fox is there being like, come on, guys, bring it out in front of the bin. Yeah, this is foxy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the, well, sorry, the other one I was going to say is your Twitter is at German Comedian. Yeah. So, you, so do you always say at when you, when you talk about Twitter? I don't, I've st- I kind of like don't do that. I mean, I do it just out of, because it was just funny because George Zack is at Greek Comedian. It is, yeah. And I was like at German Comedian. And I'm like, maybe I'm like, for this podcast, I want to collect everybody. Right. At French Comedian. Yeah. But it's Romanian also, it's, it's, it's for practical reasons. It's, um, 
if you have a name that's hard to spell mm. for a foreigner, um, you need to come up with a good solution, right? So if of I course. would tell people, my name is Christian schulte Law, you just Google it, they They'd wouldn't like, know how to spell it. They'd be like, uh-oh. And they would be shoot a lot and short and low <laughs> and all that, you know? Um, and probably the same with George, who, whose actual name is not George Zach, but it's a bit longer. Zacharopoulos has yeah. gone back to it. He's right. decided to, oh, really? okay. to go with Zacharopoulos full time now. Great. But it's the same thing. People wouldn't know how to spell it properly. And then Absolutely. that's why he went for it. So it's all, it's very... Well, I mean, I was just purely... That's why I was like, oh, I guess the German, like, why well, I was curious if you could make a living in Germany purely in German. Because like mm. with Greek, like George is saying, there's not really many Greek comedians. Mm. Like it's like quite a new thing and it's kind of growing. But I'm like, if German comedian is available, yeah, then there mustn't be that many. I don't Some think people Australian were angry to- with me a bit. Yeah, because I, I, I was the one who kind of... I have germancomedian.com as well. That's my website. Right. But I also have christianschulteloh.de as my German website. So yeah. because in Germany, obviously, if I tell people my website is germancomedian.com, it's a bit confusing. Yeah, they're like, why isn't it Deutsche Comedian? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I have both. And yeah. one is in English, one is in German. And, okay. But they're connected. Um, anyway, so yeah, but it's... Um, I guess it's just it's just easier for people to find it. Oh no, for sure. Mm. I was just I was just amazed that it was still there because yeah. like, and it's a good joke to say on stage. It's like to say like a German comedian dot com, and it was still available. I was surprised ah. too. You know? That's an easy joke. That's nice. Mm. It's a it's That's always good. good to to use a joke to promote your website. I, I find. Oh, absolutely. Because if you say just follow me, I'm um, whatever, you know, and people are like, uh, whatever, just leave yeah, it. Yeah, I got. And if I, you if you make them laugh, they will remember. No, I got I got my little one that I do that What's I do for my one? name, which is uh, my name. So my name is Daniel Muggleton. Daniel, like uh, every child born in the early 90s. Uh, Muggle, like Harry Potter. And then T-O-N, like the end of every white person's name. Good. Daniel Muggleton. Great. Um, but people still don't get it. Uh, because you know. then there would be like, it could be Stephen. That would be, there was a lot of Stevens in there. That's true. A lot and of Stevens be, going around. Yeah. Tr- Dan was big though. Daniel was big. Um, final, Henning Van. Yeah. His, I, his, I did not know who that man was. Was he the, was he the first German comedian in the UK or were you the I, first? No, no, he was here before me. Mm. And uh, when did Henning come over? Like, uh, but quite, quite a bit before me. Yeah. And then we met pretty quickly. And obviously when I arrived, everybody was like, do you know Henning? Do you know Henning? <laughs> of course. And I'm like, oh, now I know him. <laughs> you know, now I've heard of him. Right. And then we, we met and um, yeah, we're now very good friends, but we met like early on and then we've been on a holiday together and everything and now we're, we're friends. And yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Did, did he like kind of help you out initially and stuff? Yeah, he's, like, been, he's right. always been very nice and supportive and everything. And now his career is like going through the roof, which is great. Yeah. So he's on a lot of TV shows and touring and everything. And um, he's great because he's really, he's a, a social commentator now in Britain, which I think is great as a comedian, you know. Right. So they always ask him. About stuff. Uh, about stuff and his views and everything. Yeah, he's great. But you're the one on the bloody Brexit TV show, so who's winning that battle, right? <laughs> I think he's on other Brexit TV shows. There's <laughs> all, that's all there is on television nowadays, isn't there? Brexit TV shows. I, I mean, of course. They, mm. they, they, for a country that doesn't know what they're going to do, they care deeply yeah. about the outcome. Because, yeah, I think they also, they know they're now in a position where it could go either way. It could be an absolute disaster. Yeah. Or it could turn out to be okay. But it's never going to be a great outcome, you know? Yeah. So I think now everybody's starting to be like, oh, what the hell? What's going on? We should probably figure this whole thing out. Yeah. We should Google what's the EU again. Yeah. yeah. And also the whole world is laughing about us. But, you know, it used to be Mr. Bean and those things that people were laughing about. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And now it's the political decisions. So yeah. I think everybody thought our sense of humor is great. It was enough people to have people laugh about our jokes, but now we don't need that. Now we don't need it. We've got to mm-hmm. vote. Yeah. I mean, you guys, I think the British owe a lot to Trump because mm. if not for Trump, yeah, the Americans really took the hate on that one. They're like, you think you're bad at voting? Fucking hold my beer. Yeah. Let's go. That was great. That was like, what a year. 2016. <laughs> what a crazy year. Oh man, ridiculous. All right, man, we're, we're out of time. This has been a very lovely chat. Thank you for coming oh, on. Thank you very much now, for you, having me. You've, you've, you've somewhat promoted your stuff already, but... Is there, is there anything coming up in the UK uh, where people can see you? Any any big dates? Any big shows? No, just it's all on my website. So oh, um, website? yeah, so I'll be I'll probably be doing Edinburgh again next year, not this year. Taking taking a year off. Yeah, Edinburgh. I'm doing it next year, but I, I'm I'm doing the clubs and I'm doing stuff here and there, mm-hmm. and then probably doing again doing Edinburgh again next year. So GermanComedian.com, all the dates. Yeah, or and at German Comedian. Twitter. God, it's so easy. And then Instagram and all that kind of stuff, you know. The yeah, ad German that, comedian on Instagram as well? No, that's my oh. proper name, Christian Schulte Law. But on GermanComedian.com, you have all those icons. And okay, you know, well, thank, thank God yeah. for that. No, yeah, I know. You missed out on the Instagram. Did no, like I it? had it, but I changed it because I felt like I, I suddenly saw that, um, 
it became bigger and bigger Instagram and quite quickly also in Germany and everything so I was right. like no, I need to make a decision here so I went for my name you went for your name mm. okay what's your Instagram uh, Dan Muggleton I didn't get Daniel okay can you believe it there's some other guy in Australia of all places Daniel Muggleton okay is he a comic no no he's just some dude okay like what a dick yeah what he an idiot looks I hate like, him already he kind of looks like me too so I'm like I reckon some really? people are some people are following him, just being like, oh, this is the guy. And are they commenting? Oh, you're so funny. And the no, guy's like, oh, thank you. I've never told a joke, but... I haven't, I haven't looked, actually. I should, I should scope that out. I should do, do a little, little bit of research on right. at Daniel Muggleton. The guy, oh, there's a guy on Twitter, actually, who's at Daniel Muggleton. And he said he'd happily switch with me, but I just never followed up. It depends on how many followers he has. Yeah, not, not many. He's just like a dude. He talks football with his mates. He gets tagged okay. in my gig things every now and again. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> he he right. likes it. He has a good time. Great. Oh man! All right, you gotta. What was I gonna say? Yes, you gotta. You gotta say cheers, mate, to end this thing. Uh, in Australian? Well, you, it doesn't have to be in Australian, but we just, you know, okay. hope you feel comfortable. Okay. Cheers, mate. Beautiful. Christian Schultz, hello. Good talking. Spirit of Destiny All right, what a great chat with Christian Schulte Lowe, the German comedian, the very tall man. I think he's like six foot seven. So if you're listening to the podcast and you're wishing for that visual representation now at the end, you know he's a very tall boy. Uh, go check out his tour dates on his website. Uh, he's very active in the UK and on TV a bit in Germany. I think he was flying back just after the podcast to do something over there. Uh, keep an eye out. Very funny dude. Great working with him on Thursday and great chatting to him. And just realizing the the peacekeeping role of the EU. I guess in my head, it was basically like a trade thing. Because, you know, I'm coming from Australia. I'm not really thinking about the whole European conflict uh, history, like that kind of history. Um, so yeah, it was interesting to have him bring up that side. And of course, did not even know that my guest about Brexit was in fact on a TV show live during Brexit. I think that counts as the ground floor getting right in there. And obviously, clearly a very awkward thing to have to sit through as a comedian trying to make jokes. It's hard to lighten the mood when proper British economists and political reporters are freaking out. Uh, anyway, that was a great chat with him. If you do enjoy the podcast, as always, please tell someone you know. Tell them. Get them involved. Get them listening. Subscribe. Get onto iTunes. Give us a rating. Give us those five stars. We appreciate it all. And you can find us on Twitter at the Union Jackoff, or you can find me at Dan Muggleton. One day I'll get the IEL, but for now, it's just at Dan Muggleton. All right, guys, I'll be back next week with another guest on our Brexit series of the Union Jackoff. Thanks, as always, for listening. Jerkoffs, I'll catch you soon. Bye.